My name's Stephen Davis and I'll be spending the night in broken sleep. My name's Robert Davis and I'm going to be getting a good night's sleep. My name's Pat Davis and I'll be awake all night. Good morning. It's uh, one o'clock in the morning at the moment. Um, I feel pretty, pretty tired at the moment. Time is now three o'clock, and I'm starting to feel it. Well, I am pretty tired at the moment. Time is now seven o'clock. I've made it through the morning. I am shattered. I am absolutely shattered. TRL is the UK's transport research laboratory. It's an independent centre of transport research and consultancy, probably one of the largest in the world. What we're doing here today is we are looking at the effects of fatigue on the driving performance of our triplets. So we're going to be conducting the experiment in our driving simulator. Each of our triplets will drive in it for um, 90 minutes and they'll drive a typical three-lane British motorway um, at 60 miles an hour. So the ultimate aim of today's experiment is to find out how the different levels of sleep deprivation have affected our participants in terms of their driving performance. I didn't think it was too hard actually and I didn't feel too tired throughout, so overall I thought it went pretty well. Rob, who had normal sleep, coped remarkably well with what was an incredibly boring and monotonous motorway journey. He did start to feel a little bit fatigued towards the end of his trip, but otherwise he didn't experience many difficulties. I found it really difficult. I was sort of really tired and towards the end I drifted in between all three lanes. Steve, who had interrupted sleep, was substantially worse. Um, he showed very clear signs of fatigue during that journey and he did feel it as well. very tough after 30 hours of not sleeping. As it went on, it got harder and harder and harder and I just found myself nodding off. Pat, who had no sleep at all, was in a completely different league. It would actually be hard to describe him during most of that drive as even being awake. Um, such was his inability to stay in his lane, to maintain his speed on what was a relatively simple route. I think if we look collectively at the results, it really confirms a lot of what we know about fatigue. It tends to lead to very poor hazard awareness, poor judgment of situations, slow motor skills and responses, poor reaction times, and generally really poor alertness. And that's probably why studies across the world show that fatigue is a contributory factor in about 20% of all collisions that take place on our roads.